It being early days for Counter-Strike 2, lots of updates are expected and I don't see the point in covering all the changes that most people haven't even had the chance to experience yet already. I remember the early days of Counter-Strike Source had a distinctive look to it because character models all looked like they were leaning forward and down the scopes of their weapons. This was soon changed to make them appear like they were standing upright, but to this day I still associate leany character models with old and OG footage of that game. I'm saying this because I'm sure today's version of Counter-Strike 2 will, later on, have telltale signs that it's early stuff. Things like wrongly coloured smoke grenades and these weird halos around characters will forever be signs of very early footage because these things have already been fixed. Now these are just superficial things, but the latest update has changed several things that will significantly impact players of this game from now on. They've disabled some console commands which made players visible through walls, because of course they were going to do this. It literally gave you wall hacks even in competitive matches. I don't think I need to explain why this was disabled. The question is, why was it enabled in the first place? And the answer to that is probably something really dull, like five years ago they added the command to help debug Half-Life Alex. The impact it might have on future games probably wasn't even a consideration at the time. But this is why bases exist, and Valve caught this one early enough to prevent real damage from being done. But with it, they've also disabled a lot of other console commands. Commands like bot kick, bot add, and get pause. Players might not care so much about these, but I regularly use these features when I'm making my videos. I can work around a lot of these new constraints, it will just be added inconvenience. Get pause, for instance, was handy to remember my position in a level to get perfectly aligned before and after screenshots. Yes, that's how I did it. But that command is literally gone, yet set pause remains. So for now, I can still work around this feature by returning to CSGO, getting the positions I want, and then inputting them back into CS2 again. But why should I have to do that? It's ridiculous. So please, Valve, add these commands back when cheats are enabled, and it would make my life much easier. Another update that breaks my heart and most of my binds is multiple actions cannot be bound to one key. I've tested this and you can still bind the purchase of a T and CT version of the same weapon with a single button. For instance, you could buy an AKS Terrorist and an m 4 ct using the same button bind. But that's about the extent of it. If you want a single button to buy a weapon and a grenade, then you're out of luck, because only the first command now seems to work. Why would they do this? I would guess it's because Valve doesn't want to encourage advanced binds that may give players using them an advantage. You should be running about the map flailing your mouse around, not sitting in the console and preparing elaborate jump through binds in advance. Check out this as an example of some of the setups that players are using. I suspect that some of these are things that Valve is trying to prevent. They've just disabled a whole lot of other ones as well. Blanket disabling everything like this is going to cause lots of collateral damage. It means you can't have a single button to enable cheats, to enable warm-up mode, to set it to unlimited duration, to kick pots, and to turn no clip on, which was my go-to bind when starting out on many of my videos. Now I'll need to allocate a series of keys that I press in order in order to reach the same outcome. So I can still do it, it just takes more clicks. Pay to win for people with bigger keyboards and more buttons and fewer physical disabilities. But yeah, for me, it's something I want to moan about because I use these commands in ways that don't impact any other players and disabling these things will simply make my life harder. So I'm hoping that this is a short-sighted knee-jerk reaction from Valve and that they'll either revert some of these changes very soon or they'll come back with a new, improved system for all. But the current system is going to leave a lot of people unhappy. I'm not just going to read out all the patch notes because a lot of them seem fairly straightforward. For Bez the Bot Whisperer, I'll say that he's very sad that they're bringing radio restrictions back. It meant a lot to him to be able to use all voice commands for all game modes, especially with the custom agents who had a lot of custom voice lines. There are enough of these that he could use them instead of having to talk to his teammates. And he feels that restricting the voice lines is another step towards the game being only for competitive play and for few other things. This is a great time! There is a new sound when you've successfully jump thrown a grenade. If you throw it at any point as you're climbing up in your jump, your character will go, Ugh, and the grenade will land in the exact same place every time, for consistency. So if you hear a Ugh, sound from your character, that means you've triggered the reliable, consistent kind of grenade throw. Sometimes it sounds like Ugh. other times Ugh. it doesn't matter. It's all just there to inform you and nobody else on the server can hear it. It's only on the jump's descent that the distance your grenade will travel will change again. My recent video where I stacked people on top of each other awakened something in the Counter-Strike community, and you've all been very sad that this update has disabled these ragdoll collisions. It is sad, but don't worry, you can still stack people on top of each other, just not in proper online play. So this update has only returned it to how it was in CSGO, where fallen characters don't stack on top of each other by default, but if you spawn ragdolls, they still will. So fans of people stacking can continue to get their kicks elsewhere. Why has this change been made? 
I would assume to improve visibility by keeping fallen bodies at ground level instead of potentially stacking into a sight blocking wall of some sort, but I guess it also keeps the load lighter for players' computers. From my testing, the physics in this game are very well optimised and can handle stuff hundreds of times more complex than the simple body stacking you'd expect to see in competitive play, but every little helps I guess, and you just know there will be thousands of people on potato systems where even the slightest increase to system requirements could spell the end of their playable experience. So that's a few of the new updates to Counter-Strike 2. A lot of them make sense, but a few are catastrophic. Valve, please fix.